All right, so I want to show you something today. Um, I was thinking about doing a, a slightly instructional video about why it is so important to get to high deployment rates for nuclear power plants. Apart from the obvious, the carbon dioxide problem, you name it. I mean, that's just the whole premise of the deal. We need to decarbonize as quickly as possible. But the question is, how fast is everything going? Now, if we talk about the nuclear front, we can be up, we can be quite clear. We are facing a nuclear trough. I mean, at some point, the amount, at some point, we are going to have to decommission a lot of plants. Now, it's not because you and I like to decommission those plants, but, you know, regulators are going to say you have to shut that thing off. I mean, once these plants have reached 80 years, some 60 years, some 40 years, people are going to say, okay, well, now its economic lifespan has expired. Now, I'm of the opinion that you could run a nuclear reactor facility for a hundred years. But that's just depending on how well that you maintain it. Also, I have a firm belief that if you have a power plant of any kind that has a via, you know, a connection to the grid, you never ever decommission the entire place. Keep the via, you know, perhaps even keep the cooling equipment and keep the transformation equipment, perhaps even keep the generator. But once the burning part of the power plant is ready to be retired, you can always, you know, refurbish the rest and put in a reactor or whatever you want to have there, but preferably a reactor. So why am I starting with uh, renewable energy indicators? That's, that, that's just here to show you just in how bad of a, of a, of a shape we are. So if you this is so this is to, the, this column here is 2016. Wow, it doesn't doesn't really want to show it the way I want to. Okay, this column is 2016. This column is 2017. So we can see the delta. And here you see that you know they got about 178 on the, out, of, out of the top of my head. Yeah, 178 gigawatts, including hydro. Now, hydropower capacity additions were about 20, you know. So, all in all, it the most additions came from solar PV, which were, you know, almost 100. And some wind. Now, 100 gigawatts sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot because it's just not in, in, in practice. This is actually like 25 gigawatts actual. Uh, the same can be said for wind, which is not really that much. I mean, yeah. So, in all, we're not adding that much. Almost 200 gigawatts of, uh, of renewable capacity, including hydro. So that's not that much. Um, so what have I been working on? Now, this is a very old sheet of mine I have had for years. So what I've done is I have plotted all the, you know, reactor construction times for uh, most of the reactors that have ever been built. And uh, so that's, uh, you know more than 400 at least i mean some have been closed down again now you, you see these green bars those are actually reactors that took less than five years to build so point beach one which is a boiling water reactor with the capacity 591 megawatts which is in the u.s was built in a time frame of 3.4 years now, as you can see, there's also, you know, uh, 
plants that took a long time to build, like Watts Bar, for instance, that took a heck of a long time to build, almost a quarter century, and a Watts Bar 2 is even worse. So, yeah, that's not, that's not great. But, you see, there's a lot of green. The yellow is, is 5 to 10 years, so there's more. Yellow is probably the most dominant color. But as you can see, Japan, you know, they... They knew how to build reactors fast. Churn them out, you know. So this is a success story for nuclear, basically. I mean, look at this here. Ikata 2, pressurized water reactor. 3.6 years. That's very fast. That's very fast. Ah, uh, yep. So if you if you boil it down to the you know the the numbers six uh, 76 uh yeah plants got built within a five-year ten for a time frame 266 got built within 10 years and 94 exceeded 10 years now if we if we plot it in a chart you know this is in this chart. I don't have any chart titles or anything, but it, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you look at the amount of plants that are built within a time frame of three point four years to seven point eight years, you know, that's almost uh, that's most of them. That's probably half, half or you know two thirds. Then you get seven to eight. Uh, then you get seven point eight to ten years. That's another sixty six. Then you get 10, point, 10 to 10 years to 12.2 years. That's another 32. And, you know, the numbers diminish until these are basically the outliers. These are the outliers. Now, this chart, this chart basically gives us all the reactors and their uh, build times. Now, as you can see, the most, I mean, most of them are built within 10 years. And there's a couple of spikes and these are the spikes we don't like. I mean, they are inevitable. These are some of the some some of the time. These are regulatory problems. Other times, some people goofed stuff up in the construction. Things need to be redone. I mean, there is a thousand reasons you can imagine. But overall, if you look, I mean, the most of these are at or around the five year point. There is some below the five year point. So that means that even if we would build contemporary reactors, boiling water reactors or pressurized water reactors or, you know, can-dos or, you know, those kinds of things, we are going to be capable to build them within five years. But here's the thing, and this is something that Kirsty Gogan told me once. I mean, when I was working on the documentary Climate Zero Hour, I um, interviewed Kirsty Gogan from Energy for Humanity, and she says we have to move away from the project-based deployment and move forwards towards the product-based deployment. And it's pretty simple. I mean, if you productize your reactor, like, for instance, uh, uh, Westinghouse tried to do with the AP1000 but didn't do, if you manage to productize your reactor, that means that everything in your supply chain is clear. You have all your requirements set for each individual part, which means that you can mass manufacture these parts. You can bring these parts together either at the construction site or in a manufacturing facility, depending on how you want to, you know, build your reactor. I mean, some reactor concepts could potentially be built in factories. Other reactor concepts are much bigger. You know, we're talking about gigawatt scale reactors. These probably need to, uh, you know, be constructed on site. Of course, you know, stuff like... Um, pressurizers and uh, generators and heat exchangers and such they can probably be built in a factory as well so productizing your reactor making sure that there's no more ambiguity about you know where what goes what kind of 
design specifications are required and just hammer it down from the from the smallest nut to the biggest flange hammer everything down these are the specifications we need this is you know and then start building them and of course the first reactors you are going to build in that way might turn up somewhat more expensive than you initially thought but then if you are determined to drive down the cost and you say okay this is our first learning experience now we know how to do these things these and these and these are the tweaks we need to do in order to make sure that everything is normalized and standardized then you can start churning these things out and i mean it's not the build time that's 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 the hurdle here i mean you can see it the proof is in the pudding right no the the hurdles we are now facing are uh what people call the balance of plan it's not just you know the 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 electrical connection and that kind of stuff but it's mainly how is the project managed how well established is the supply chain do we get everything on time you know can we can we make strides can we do we have a strict end point do we need to be finished in five years do we have a potential overlap of two months or something like that i mean you don't you, you, you cannot accept these kind of spikes anymore where you get up to you know 40 years i mean it's ridiculous I, i'll be i'll be honest that's ridiculous there's gross incompetence in these large in these large spikes and we shouldn't accept it so um yeah there was there was just a small thing that i wanted to show you um let's see so um, um let's say that renewable does indeed add uh 200 gigawatts a year right um let's go to excel another time let's start a new workspace i'm going to you know zoom in a bit so that it's a bit bigger because i'm working on a very 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 big screen okay let's suppose that we need an end goal for electricity by 2050 let's suppose that it is 40,000 terawatt hours right for some reason oh yeah i put the comma in there it's 40,000 terawatt hours okay so if you look at the renewable stuff right let's see where the renewable stuff is i want to keep this this as clean as possible now we are going to do it including hydro so that's 2000 gigawatts right so let's see uh required okay now we are going to do this backwards so we know that we have 2000 gigawatts so that's 2.1 terawatt hours then we need to the multiply that with 8766 which is the number of hours you get in a year and then you have to divide that by 100 because for now we are going to apply a very generous capacity factor of 30 percent all over the board so that's including wind that it's in, that's including solar but also geothermal and hydro so let's see now we have a as you can see we have about 5000 um uh, terawatt hours of uh, uh re annual production right that's what we have so that's one tenth of what we need by 2050 but that's only electricity right so here's what some people do wrong when they say okay we have you know we have 5000 terawatt hours of production we add here's here's the clue annual additions at this moment renewables add about and here we go so let's say it's 200 gigawatts so that's 0.2 terawatt hours of 0.2 terawatts times there we go again 8666 divided by 100 multiplied by 30 
there we go. So we add about 525 um, terawatt hours per year. This is very optimistic. <laughs> I don't think it's that much because I don't think that we reach 30%, but let's do it for the, you know. So the gap that we need to close is basically this, right? So that's that's more than we produce today. I mean, today we produce about um, gap. Today we produce about 27,000. All right, so now if we divide this by this, right? This is very simple. It would take us 65 years. All right, so 65 years, years to close the gap. That's at current, that's at current speed. Now, we don't know whether we can keep, you know, pushing additions e each year. So let's see what would happen if we would add 100 terawatt hours, uh, no, 100 gigawatts of nuclear capacity to this, to this, uh, to these additions each year. Okay, so here we go, is twice that, 0 0.1 times 8766 divided by 100 times 90. So if we would add, if we were, were capable of adding, you know, 100 gigawatts of nuclear capacity each year, that would basically double what we are doing, you know, or not double, yes, it would do not, not just double, but you know, we would add much more than uh, annual additions, annual nuclear additions, right? So what we are doing now is we are going to add the nuclear additions. So this is RE plus nuclear, right? And if we then divide the gap figure by this, then we might be able to decarbonize all electricity in 26 years. 26 years to close the gap, right? So it's that simple. It's, it's not hard math to do. Now, if we could double this, and if we could double this, I mean, that would be great. But the truth is that we have never done such a thing for either technology. We have never done that for nuclear. We have never added 100 gigawatts of nuclear in a year. And we have never, you know, I mean, this is unprecedented. What we are seeing now in terms of renewable additions is unprecedented. We have never done such things before. And, you know, there are already supply problems on the horizon. If you look, for instance, at lithium, if you look, for instance, at cobalt, you know, uh, all the other uh, materials that we need, there are supply shortages. And these supply shortages don't mean that we cannot churn out product. It just means that the product becomes more expensive. Now, how it is possible that renewable uh, technologies keep getting cheaper I don't know I am quite honestly baffled by that because you it's you cannot square the supply chain shortages with a cheaper commodity that's just not that that's just count counterintuitive and intuitive it doesn't you know economically it doesn't make any sense so there have to be other forces working towards creating cheaper renewables and my suspicion is and even though some people say this is all you know without subsidies and without incentives i don't think that's true i don't think that's true i i, I can't i simply cannot believe it so here's the thing if we look at nuclear costs and I mean, uh, let's see if I can pull something up here. 
just like that. I mean, um, uh, Kirsty, for instance, Kirsty Gogan, nuclear. Let's see, because she made a very, very good, um, very good. Oh, wait a second. That's not what I want to see. But she made a very good article about the whole um, Queen and Geo of the Year. Is it in the resources tab? I can't remember at this moment. Uh, <laughs> this is by my friend Raleigh. Raleigh created this document. In any case, um, Kirsty basically discovered that the 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 nuclear bit costs the same in Europe and in the US as that it costs in the East. Building that stuff costs the same, but the extra added costs are in the overhead. All the regulatory pressure you know, the going back and forth between the regulator and the builder and the constant, you know. That's what's driving the costs upward instead of down. So here's the thing. I don't think that nuclear energy is expensive. I've told you this time and time again. I mean, some people say that it's the broken window fallacy that I'm using, but, I, but it's correct. Nuclear, a nuclear power plant is the best economic driver for any region. Yes, it means that you pay a lot up front. And yes, it means that you have to, you know, employ uh, workers with higher salaries and such. But the plant pays taxes and it pays taxes because it produces a lot of economic commodity. And those e and that economic commodity is taxed, so it's a it's a gigantic force for good in any region. So, in I am an outlier in the pro pro nuclear field. I say yes, we need all this stuff. We need it to some degree. I, I, I'm not seeing that we need to double or triple or quadruple whatever we are doing here. I think that we are that we are on track, and I've showed you that with the current additions as we have them, if we augment those additions with nuclear capacity, added nuclear capacity, we can close the gap in terms of electricity. Now the primary energy problem. It's more nuanced because if we look at, for instance, primary energy, there's two thirds of all the primary energy that we put into the system is lost due to thermal inefficiency. So right now we are about uh, at about 180,000 terawatt hours of primary energy, right? Primary energy consumption each year. Now, one th two thirds of that I mean uh, let's see divided by three uh, times two oh that's good that means this is one third so we use effectively 60,000 terawatt hours effective use right but that doesn't mean that you don't need 180,000 terawatt hours of input because you even though you lose the two thirds it's because of the way that we consume it. There's there unless we can change the way we consume it, unless we can become, uh, unless we can consume. Let's say we we uh, we go from losing two thirds to losing one third. Then you, I mean, then you keep. Then you have. Then you only need one hundred and twenty thousand terawatts of primary energy right so it's that simple it's that simple no it's not that simple because what i'm doing now is incorrect <laughs> it's actually incorrect uh suppose that we uh can do that we only lose one third that would mean that we would need ninety thousand terawatt hours instead of 180 thousand terawatt hours but here's the thing we have uh, 
right now we have about 6 billion people living in poverty, right? Or not in poverty, 6 billion people are living in the non-OECD countries. And if you look at non-OECD per capita energy usage, I mean, I'm doing this out, out, out of the top of my head. So that's about, I don't know, 20,000 kilowatt hours per year per person, right? Now, the 2 billion people or the 1 billion people living in living in the OECD, they're somewhere between, I don't know, uh, somewhere between 40, 40 and 60,000 kilowatt hours per person per year, right? So if these people catch up with these people, so let's let let's let's just do the math right now. I mean, we're now in about 26 minutes. Maybe this video will end up, you know, uh, taking up 35 minutes of your time. I think it's it's good to do this 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 on screen. I just want to show you, you know. So this this is not correct. It's seven billion people in the not OCD because we're all, no 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 no. Oh, six because we we're at we are at seven it's six point five and it's one point two that's correct one point two now I have to be and and I, and I don't don't care if you think that this looks stupid I mean I don't care okay so right now let's see I'm I'm just going to do some some big figures i'm going to say okay this is about it this is about it this is about it let's see is uh this figure multiplied by six five one two one two three one two three right that's okay and then then, then we multiply this figure with one two one two one two three one two three up uh, what did I do wrong? I did nothing wrong. No, this is correct. Yeah, the zeros are the same. Now, this is kilowatt hour, right? Now, this is kilo, kilowatt hour. Now, uh, if we add them, this one plus this one, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to normalize. I'm going to create a terawatt hour metric, right? Because otherwise, so uh, this means megawatt hour. This here is gigawatt hour. This is terawatt hour. Now, these are just increments of 1000, basically. So what we are going to do is we say this uh, uh, divided by 1000, right? And we do that for the entire thing. Then we say this divided by 1000. There you go. Okay, now we get zeros. It's no longer in... Uh, Okay, let's see. Okay, so so I'm off by about twenty thousand terawatt hours here. That's that's some rounding issues here. I mean, if I say this is fifteen thousand, let's see what it does. That's more like it than if we say here this is fifty thousand. Uh, this is just you know touchy feely stuff. Uh, yeah, they're probably at twenty. Uh, oh wait a second now it's even less <laughs> uh, uh what am i doing okay no still not good still not good uh, 17 perhaps yeah this is something like it okay now suppose that these people catch up right so this is this is the total terawatt hours per year world population right it's that simple. So, and this is with two thirds, two thirds losses in primary to end use conversion. It's that simple, right? So now these people are going to catch up. First of all, we're going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire thing, and we're going to redo the maths. Well, not 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 entirely redo it, but I'm just, just for argument's sake. Let's see what happens if, because in the end, this will be eight point five billion people. This one and a half billion people, or something something like it, right? So uh, let's see. I have to add. Oh, right. 
uh, what is happening here uh, yeah all oh, right I need to fix this here this is done eight all right and this is then five here right there all right so let's see now we have only increased the population we've done nothing about our end use efficiency stuff so we have added you know let's see what the delta is like the exact delta between this and that all right so that's forty nine thousand terawatt hours delta oh no not delta delta that's a 49 it's almost a 50,000 delta between now and then and here's the kicker let's say that the west does the unimaginable we are capable of cutting 10,000 kilowatt hours per person per year so now we still have to add 34,000 terawatt hours, but it's not reasonable to expect that the people in the non-OECD are going to use less energy. If anything, these people are going to catch up with the OECD, and if we take 30 years, a lot can happen. So let's suppose that they have caught up to 30,000 kilowatt hours per person per year. There you have it. So now we have a primary energy requirement of 315,000 terawatt hours per year, which means that we have almost doubled the primary energy use for each person. So let's add something here. I mean, I am going to delete this and delete that. Now I'm going to say end, uh, 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 yeah, end use, right? We are going to say, okay, how much is this an end use? So what we are going to do now is basically uh, doing one third for everything, right? Like that. Now we get two zeros there. That's no problem. Let's clean it up a bit. I mean, it's not. I don't need a thousand separator in this case. So this is the end use. So this means that in, in, in contemporary times, we, are, we have an end use of 56,000 terawatt hours per year for the world population. World pop, right? And that's the same for this figure here. So might get a little bit confusing, but this is different stuff than, than, than that here. This is different stuff, all right? So suppose that we do it differently. In this scenario, we can we can eliminate this here, basically, all right? So no, 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 no. That's not what we're going to do. Um, let's see. So do, 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 do. all right. Um, do, 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 do. Let's think about this just for a second now. Um, suppose that we... <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I am going to... Uh, I'm going to do it up front instead of doing it backwards because otherwise this, this stuff will will not go okay we can, we are now going to use so this is still primary energy right um, but we are going to lower it by one third yeah, let's see we are going to do it more efficient next time so what did we do next uh, what are we going to do next uh, let's see so the effective usage here is 10,000, right? And the effective usage here is this divided by three, right? Okay, this is the effective usage. All right, no, we don't want those. And what we are going to do now instead of what we, are, what we did just now, so this is, th these figures are going to come out differently now. Um, Yes, so this is effective usage, 
and we are going to uh, and this means that if we go from 33 percent effective to 66 percent yes so now we are going to do this uh, we want to add uh, let's see boom, 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 boom. we want to add one third that's basically it yeah we want to add one third of that now wait a second And don't you worry, I will cut this out anyway. So instead, what we are going to do is we are going to do this, All right? So this, these are the new primary energy, primary energy figures. So all we need to do is, right, change this into F21, right there, F21, for some reason, oh. There's still a D in there. Oh, wait a second. F21, please. Yes, there we go. So now we've changed it to F21. Right. So what we get now is... So here's the problem. Oh, let's see. Here is the problem because this is because I'm doing something incorrect now. Oh, this is end use, right? This is primary, primary energy. That's here. This is the primary energy column, right? Let's just give it a funky color. I hope you can see it still. Yes, okay, it's good. Let's uh, basically do everything with the correct alignment because otherwise uh, stuff will look, uh, start looking funky. All right, there we go. Uh, I shouldn't have done that. I mean, this looks strange. Yeah, this is better. <laughs> All right. So let's see what we're now going to do because now we have 17,000 kilowatt hours per person per year. This is 50,000 kilowatt hours per person per year. This is the total uh, primary energy in kilowatt hours. As you can see here, I can remove this and I can remove this, delete. So I make this kilowatt hour, right? And then uh, redistribute this to below just to make it a little bit more uh, <laughs> better better to grasp. So this is all primary energy. All of this is primary energy. This is the end use. So based on the one third, you know, right? Based, based on losing two thirds. So... Suppose that, I mean, the end use is basically the figure that, that, that is, you know, uh, that, that is the, the end all be all that you need. So now if, if you lose two, one third instead of two thirds, you basically have to double this number because we already were working with thirds. So if you want to know if you, if you, if you, double the efficiency right so instead of losing two-thirds you're losing one-third of your energy you'll end up with 113 
thousand terawatt hours of primary energy required and in you know in if we maintain status quo that's how it is today if we would do it today just flip the switch if we would do it today we would need 113,000 terawatt hours instead of 170,000 terawatt hours. But if we do it in 50 years, if we do it in 20, you know, in 31 years when it's 2050, then we will end up with 210,000 terawatt hours of primary energy needed. Now, cutting one third of all the losses, or, or, or better, doubling the efficiency, the end use efficiency, that's a huge task. Now, nobody does this. Nobody in the energy world does this. I mean, uh, if you look at, for instance, what Mark C. Jacobson does, he doesn't do this. He doesn't look at world population growth, and he doesn't assume that the non-OECD is somehow going to catch up with the OECD, and he doesn't, you know, he maintains status quo. I mean, look at what happens if we make this 40,000. I mean, come on, that's 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 100,000 terawatt hours, more than we use today, even if we, we improve the efficiency, the end-use efficiency. So people who are harping about end-use efficiency, they don't know what they're talking about because they don't, they don't account for a growing world population and they don't account for the fact that non-OECD people are going to want to catch up and it's their right to try to catch up. I mean, and if you look at it really, really critically and you, and you, and you watch, for instance, at China, I mean, a third of the energy they use and which is added to their per capita energy uses it usage is actually for export to the rest of the world so they aren't even there yet i mean they are <clears throat> they are they do have caught up a little but they are nowhere near an oecd live standard they're nowhere near an OECD life standard. Most of their electricity or a large sum of the electricity that they produce is actually meant for export. It's basic, it should basically be added to our energy usage, which it to some degree is when you took when when you take in primary energy, you also look at the the energy that is used to produce aluminium for cans, uh, plastics for you know where people put the vegetables in and such, you know everything's in there. But in any case, if you look at this, two hundred and sixty six thousand terawatt hours. Now let's now let's do this let's let's create 133,000 terawatt hours with nuclear plants right so what we do is we take this we divide it by 90 because that's what we do this we then uh, let's see uh, multiply by 100 right now we have to add one more and then we divide it by 8,766. 8, now, it probably said, okay, so this means that we need 16 terawatts, 17 terawatts. Let's, let's, let's do it like that. Now, just, you know, I'm not doing this. I, I, I is so 17 terawatts of nuclear power capacity right now we have less than one terawatt let's let's make that pretty sure so this is 17 terawatts let's just pull this down this way that's the same as there we go gigawatts so 16,000 gigawatts of nuclear reactor capacity required to get this done, 16,900 gigawatts. So that's, I mean, if you want to make, and, the, and this, is, this is the super efficient. That doesn't mean that it, this is not primary energy, by the way, this is end use. So we need to produce slightly more because there's some transmission losses and some conversion losses left and right. So 1,700 gigawatts might be correct. 
Um, that's 17,000. 17,000 nuclear power plants. Or, no, 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 I'm sorry. That's 17,000 one gigawatt reactors. Now, suppose that we can build eight reactors at a time, at a, at a, at a plant that's 2,000 plants. We need to build 2,000 new nuclear reactor facilities, nuclear power plants, in order to, you know, get get this done i don't think that we need i i do think that it will be more i don't think that we will be able to cut uh one third of our losses i don't think that's possible i i don't think that we can go to an uh to a to a a efficiency of 66 percent rather than 33 percent. i don't think that's possible but if you break it down like this Building 2,000 power plants is not impossible, not at all. And the force multiplier here is if we want to build 100 gigawatts, so 100 gigawatts. Let's 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 say that this this is um, uh, I'm losing it right now. <laughs> okay, so let's say that we want to build 100 gigawatts per year, right? That's adding 700, uh, just did it, I just did it, 750 something, uh, let's see, divided by 100 times 90, right, so there you go, oh yeah, let's, uh, let's divide that one by 1000 to get the terawatt hour and figure because that's what we're talking about in any case. So we can add 788 terawatt hours per year if we manage to create 100 gigawatts of nuclear, of, if we manage to add 100 gigawatts of nuclear capacity to the worldwide grid each year. Now, if we divide that by eight, oh, wait a second, that's not what I did there if we is if we divide this by eight that's 12 and a half nuclear power plant a year 12 and a half nuclear power plant a year that's not bad we are going to be capable of building 12 and a half nuclear power plant per year I'm sure of it but if you look at this figure right and we say okay how long is this going to take us well, that's still 169 years. So just to show you how steep our challenge really is. Our challenge is enormous. We can do the same thing here, right? Just just for just to check. Let's see. There you have it. Exact same number. So that's what I wanted to show you. You know how to do. I love maths. I have to be honest. I, I I've been addicted to. I've been a math addict since like the beginning of time, since since I knew that math existed. So, yeah. So we started with, you know, doing a theoretical. What would happen if we would need forty thousand gigawatt hours per year? Um, you know. We would, we would need 66 years to close the gap with renewables and lonely. Adding 100 gigawatts of nuclear to the, to the mix would take, a, would take that figure down to 26 years to close the gap. Now, our current primary energy use is 80,000 terawatt hours per year around. Since we do, uh, since we lose about two thirds of our energy during transport, and transportation and transformation you know we end up using effectively 60,000 terawatt hours of energy if we double our um, efficiency and this is incorrect again we will end up using 100 we will end up needing 120,000 terawatt hours of primary energy instead and that's the number that Mark Sheet Jacobson uses approximately so mark c jacobson mainly mainly thinks that doing end use stuff is enough but then he forgets to take into account population mechanics 
he he i mean we are going to if this if we maintain status quo just doing status quo let's let's say we cut you know we we the oecd cuts 10,000 kilowatt hours per person we still get a delta of about 12,000 terawatt hours per year 12,000 terawatt hours per year so that's a big delta and that's going to take us 86 years to get over with nuclear if we add 100 gigawatts per year just to show you how big of a problem it it, it is we are in a heck of a situation people don't even realize how bad it is and i mean these maps are pretty transparent everybody can do that i am not using uh i'm not using you know growth predictions i'm not going to say oh maybe if we manage to attain 10 percent growth in renewables and such because those calculations just like this is just compounding the issue it it you know, people are making people are making unwarranted assumptions and they're trying to push us towards the 100 percent renewable and it's an abyss it's an abyss once we get to you know once we get 10 percent of the way if we if we would commit to 100 percent renewable now every country on the planet by 2030 we would realize that we would have wasted 10 years a decade and we would be falling into the abyss we would we would be falling into the abyss people don't realize and they are just many people are saying oh well the cost of renewables are coming so far down all we need is renewables because everybody is going to be able to afford them but nobody has done the math nobody has you know if if mark c jacobson says well 120,000 terawatt hours is all we need well then all is well right that's the end use stuff well that's fine but if the oecd uh, e even grows by you know three thousand kilowatt hours per person you can see that there's already a significant difference turning up even if we do end use right if we do if this is so this is primary energy right with uh one third losses instead of two thirds so that's what this is and if you look here i mean mark c jacobson is already out of bounds by twenty thousand. what no no by thirty thousand terawatt hours and um i don't see that it is going to happen i don't see i don't think that we are going to do it i mean if you look at if you look at renewable additions which are about 500 you know there you go it's going to take us 300 years to get there now whatever you say about oh yes the the infinite growth of renewables <laughs> i mean cutting down a 300 uh year gap to 50 years or 30 years which is required is just madness so this is one of the reasons that make me quite glum when i think about primary energy uh, end use efficiency those stuff you know um, I don't think that these people pay attention enough I don't think that they do I don't think that they are uh, are thinking it through well enough and I'm uh, I, I'm ready to be you know proven wrong but while these people are trying to prove me wrong I'm not willing to sit you know in my chair which I do without uh questioning their uh their logic i mean this is nothing but mathematical logic what i'm trying to convey here so yeah i hope you like this video i was uh i was planning this video for a long time um but right now i'm i'm thinking about using this simpler format not going to edit as much um just share the information give it raw i mean you know this is what we need after all so i wish you all a very very well uh i wish you all very well i hope you're well and uh take it easy and uh let's see each other next time Bye bye